everybody, and welcome to Hoopty in the Hills. I'm Gary, your host, and this is my 1999 Porsche Boxster. It is the base model. I actually traded for this car, which is an interesting story. I'm gonna tell you now. But first, cue my intro. Hey there guys, welcome to Hoopty in the Hills. Boy, do I have a cool project to show you today. The newest thing that I just got, it's a long story. I have a, a lot of interesting stuff to tell you about it, but first we're gonna check out the car and just talk about uh, how I acquired it, where I got it, and some of the problems and what I plan to do with it. So let's get into our brand new project. This is my 1999 Porsche Boxster. So, interesting, interesting story. Uh, I was scouring Facebook Marketplace and I actually found this car pretty much by luck. I found a person by searching just the word trade and I was looking for something to trade the Mustang I had for. The Mustang was my daughter's car so i didn't really have much use for it um, my daughter just started college and i was worried about the drive that she had and of course we live in a winter climate um, she had a 2005 mustang deluxe convertible the v6 um, and it was an automatic so it was not the car for me um, i like five speeds i like bigger engines, a little more power. It was not the right car for me. Uh, so I started out just looking for things to trade for, uh, trying to find out how to maximize what I could get back for what I had in the Mustang. Now the Mustang uh, was by just about any account, perfect. When I first got it, I had a couple pieces of it painted. We had the wheels kind of redone by a guy that knew how to do that. Um, the interior was darn near perfect. The top looked really good. Uh, the Mustang was perfect. This car is not perfect. <laughs> uh, it's not that bad. It is not up to my standards. So there's gonna be some stuff that's gonna have to be done to it, but um, it's definitely not in the same condition the Mustang was in, to say the least. Because um, I would say the Mustang, I don't like to say things are perfect, but for 2005, um, it had really like one scratch on it. Uh, and then it also had one little worn hole in the driver's seat um, that was literally smaller than a cigarette burn. It was right on the edge where you get in, of course, on the bolster. But anyway, um, Let's go over this car and talk about the issues it has. And, you know, well, first I'll just tell you about the deal. Um, the lady that I started talking to had this car listed for 14,000 or 13,9 or something like that. And in her description, what told me that this might actually work. First of all, she was not close to me. She was in South Carolina. Uh, of course, I'm in West Virginia, so she was, you know, probably six and a half, seven, seven and a half hour drive away. She was below Charlotte um, across the end of South Carolina. But the description, and I'll post it up here so you can read it, for the Mustang, uh, I'm sorry, for this Porsche said, uh, basically that her 18 year old son, or I'm sorry, 16 year old son was just about to start driving and Basically, they didn't want him driving a manual and they didn't want him driving a car this powerful. So, they were looking to trade. Um, the value of the two cars, very, very similar. The high book on the Mustang was like 11, uh, 10.4 or 10.5 or 10.6 or something like that. But I really thought of it as more like 11 just because of the condition the car was in. 
Um, the high book on this car was actually like about 14, but it's not in the kind of condition the Mustang was in. I would call it fair condition, and we'll go over a couple of those problems. Um, so really they were very close in value, and just to get the conversation started, I immediately said that I'd be willing to trade her the Mustang plus bring $3,000 cash. So that was a very, very, you know, balanced deal where nobody was really getting away with anything there, uh, which is the best kind of trade to make. I don't like to feel like I rip people off and I definitely don't like to get ripped off. That's usually what happens. Usually I screw up and uh, I've not done well in trades in the past. <laughs> but anyway, let's kind of just start looking over the car here in detail. Um, one thing I'm kind of surprised with this car is the amount of parts that have like faded, you know, because I've had lots of old Corvettes and Mustangs and things like that. Um, it doesn't seem to have aged quite as well as those cars do. Um, one thing just to start off, the Porsche logo on this wheel and all the wheels, uh, you know, that's supposed to be gold. So that silver look that it has to it is really not right. Uh, it's really faded. Um, just go over some of the problems here with the body. This paint right here, I don't know if somebody's jerked this out and ripped the paint out or what, but you can see around this vent, uh, the paint is not in great condition. Uh, this door, somebody's banged it on stuff a lot, getting in and out. Uh, maybe somebody chubby like me, <laughs> they really did a number on the edge of this door. You can see there's, there's chips all the way down through here. So these, We'll talk about how we're going to fix that, but I'm really not happy with that. Uh, especially when the door's shut, you can really see this one really bad. And down here, I mean, somebody just whacked that door on something. That's just crazy that somebody, to me, that's crazy with a Porsche that you're not smart enough not to bag your door into stuff. And please don't be insulted if the people I bought it from are watching this. I know you're not the first owners. It's hard to tell who did it, but I, I just can't believe somebody wasn't more careful with the Porsche. Uh, the car is very dirty right now. Uh, it was not detailed when they sold it to me and I haven't gotten it done yet. It's gonna, gonna get done really soon here. I just wanted to go ahead and do this video first so you see it in the condition that I got it in. I don't want to sugarcoat it and make it like I got this perfect car because uh, I got a spectacular detail guy. His name's Richard Hardy. Uh, Appalachian Detailing, I think is the name of this company. I'll, uh, for people local here in Clarksburg or in West Virginia, I'll put a link to him so people know what kind of work he does. Once again, just dirt and grime. I mean, lots of brake dust and stuff here. Uh, generally, the body is very good. There's some scratches right here. Once again, how do you treat your Porsche? It actually looks like in a garage or something, somebody was laying something on this fender because I mean, there's no way that happens. Either that or somebody's walking by and just doesn't give a shit and is dragging keys across it, I don't know. Very dirty though. Windshield's good, no cracks, nothing like that. We are going to uh, recondition these lights a little bit because I don't know if this shows up good on the camera, but there is a little bit of yellowing here. Um, but I can actually feel it. It's raised up, so I think maybe we can get one of those kits and sand some of that off because I actually looked up these lights. A new set of lights is like a thousand dollars. And even these used lights I see selling on eBay for four hundred dollars each. <laughs> so I guess the thousand dollar new lights really isn't that expensive if I can sell these for four hundred dollars each on eBay, but uh, we'll think about that later on. You can see down here on these grill pieces. Somebody actually, it looks like, painted those by hand. Somebody not very smart or very talented. I mean, that looks terrible. It actually looks like they painted it with a brush. Uh, I love the, I love the Euro plate move over on the front, printed backwards. It's pretty cool. Um, right here on the nose, there's a good bit of, just little chips, nothing real serious. Uh, probably nothing I'll worry too much about. Also, this grill, you can see they did the same thing here. You know, they just obviously like painted it with a brush and maybe even like house paint because you can see how easily it's chipping off of there. So, somebody was stupid there. Couple 
little chips here that have actually been touched up. Um, but overall, the hood looks very good, except for there's a chip right there, and there's two chips here. But overall, looking very good. Porsche symbol actually looks way better than all the other Porsche symbols, so I'd say that one may have been replaced. Same thing here. You can see the a little bit of yellowing here on the light. But once again, I can feel the roughness of that light. So I'm hoping I'm going to be able to get one of those kits and sand that off. This wheel right here um, is actually one of the worst problems on the car. Uh, it's been curbed pretty bad. I don't know how well that comes across on the camera, but this wheel is junk. <laughs> I mean, it's the nicest way I can think of to say it. Uh, got a mark here that's actually pretty bad. That's probably one of the worst spots on the whole car, actually. It's down into the... It's deep enough that it's into the black plastic rubber, whatever. Little scratch right here. Oh, no, that wiped off. Not a scratch. <laughs> uh, it's so dirty. It's actually hard to tell what's a scratch and what's not. On this passenger side door, I don't know if I can catch the light at the right angle. Maybe if I move around here. But there is a little dent right here. I mean, it's not terrible and it's there's no paint damage. But like I said, I don't know if I'm catching the angle correct. But it's a little dent. Uh, I have one of those dent puller kits, so I'm hoping I'll be able to take that dent out. Hopefully that won't be an issue. I think the plan for this car once again if you look I don't know if you can see this on camera but right across the ridge here all these little scratches there's no way that that came from normal driving or normal wear and tear I feel like some idiot just had this thing in a garage and didn't care to scrape things across it I mean how do you get scratches right there on top of the fender it just doesn't make any sense. These lights, I really don't care for. I'd like to upgrade these lights to something a little more modern looking, like the newer Boxsters that are clear instead of the amber and red. But once again, the prices are really bad. <laughs> I've already looked at the prices. I mean, you're talking close to $1,000 to replace those lights. Um, but once again, the used parts are also worth a lot of money. So. If I replace them, I can sell the used parts and recoup most of my money, probably, you know, 70% of my money, which if that's the case, I'll probably end up doing. Um, the top, I don't have up right now for you to look at, and I'm actually not going to put it up right now, um, but it needs a new top. Uh, so no misleading there. The plastic window on the back has two gashes in it that the people that sold it to me said actually happened the day they sold it to me because they put it down when it was freezing temperatures and you know either the age or the top or i've just read that porch tops have that issue in the cold uh so the guy puts it down that day and it cracks as he's coming to meet me and he said you know he almost had a heart attack worried about you know he had not told me about that uh when we got in negotiations i actually saved a little bit of money because of that because he had not told me about that i offered him a little less cash you know i told you i was going to bring three thousand and i'm going to be completely honest i can't remember if he took six hundred dollars off or eight hundred dollars off uh it was either six hundred or eight hundred less than three thousand that i actually paid them so i walked away with a little bit even better deal than i expected uh, but I'm going to have to buy a top, so I guess you shouldn't say it's a better deal because I know the top, maybe I can get one for $600. i have seen a couple, but they were actually out of stock. Um, but $800 seems to be more like a realistic. And also with a glass window, I don't want another plastic window. Uh, I don't know how a superior German car ever ended up with a plastic window. So the seats are looking pretty good. You can see it's got a little bit of wear right here, but it's not all the way through, and hopefully I'm gonna be able to somehow treat that and kind of make that look a little better. Uh, there's also 
just some like lines in this, but I'm gonna put some good leather conditioner on there and hopefully that's not too much to worry about. As far as the interior, one of the main things that sticks out here is the carpeting. You can see, just from sun, I guess, is very, very dyed out. Um, it's very sun bleached. Back here in between the seats, you can see how light it is. Now, I don't think this was ever red. At first, I thought this was really, uh, really dyed or bleached, whatever you wanna say. Um, but the more I look at it, I think it must have started out like a pink or a rose color. Rose is what I would call it. Um, so it's not really as bleached as I initially thought it was. It's not terrible, but not ideal. Uh, one idea that I actually have is possibly to take all the carpet out of this car and have it dyed black. Um, just doing it the old fashioned way with, you know, dye manually. So it is a five speed, thank God, save the manuals. Uh, the fact that it's a five speed is actually the only reason probably that I got it. I don't, you know, the fact that these people couldn't teach their son to drive a, a five speed uh, is really the reason I got this deal. So you see the gauges, it does have a check engine light on. Uh, we'll talk about that in a later video because I have not scanned it yet. I'm not really positive what that check engine light's for. Um, but the car runs like a top. I mean, it's it's runs like a new car. It has 67,000 miles on it. It does have an upgrade Pioneer stereo. It's also got some USB plugs there. Uh, got a couple buttons. I'm not even sure what they do. The heat and air and everything works fine. Sorry I didn't clean up more. You can see it's pretty grimy in here. It's not even close to clean if you look up in there. But that's why we get a good deal on it. You don't get good deals on clean cars. Go over here and look on the passenger side also. This seat, much, much better condition. And you can see up in there on the passenger side, obviously there's the color that this carpet probably was to begin with. So it is pretty faded. So, I mean, I would almost call that like a pink rose colored carpet before. Finding goodies down here in the holes that I didn't even know were here. I'm not sure what that is. Oh, it's a cigarette lighter from when they put the USBs in there. Super, super dirty up there. Look at that vent. I mean, this car has just not been taken care of well. But it'll be taken care of well now. I'm going to save it. <laughs> If you're not familiar with the design of a Porsche, I'll show you the front and the back here. So here's the back, not a big trunk. I mean, it's obviously just for a few little personal items. I mean, it's no more than, at its largest point, not more than 18 inches deep. Uh, and up here in the front, it's probably you know, not even close to that. Uh, pretty small, but look at all the leaves. Just not well taken care of. I mean, I'm gonna make this thing look so much better just by getting it cleaned up. So back here, you check the oil coolant, and here is actually the dipstick, which is funny. Now remember, this is a Boxster. The engine is right behind this panel. Um, you can't really see it. <laughs> uh, from what I've seen online, the best way to access it is actually to open this piece up with the top and then actually take the convertible top out if you need to work on the thing, um, which is crazy. But that's why the Boxster handles like it does being a mid-engine car. So the engine is actually right under the top, which is very, very strange, but super cool if you ask me. So let's open the front front trunk the frunk if I can figure out how to do it on camera oh, here we go so you do have a good bit of space up here this kind of makes up for how small the back is you actually have a spare tire which I think is unusual for this type of car I don't know 
what this thing right here is. It almost looks like a... I don't even want to say what it is so I don't sound stupid. It looks like some kind of intake or something. I mean, it has like a little grill on top of it. At first I thought it was a stereo amp, but it looks more important than that. I don't know. So we'll have to research that and see what that is. This little cover here is very strange looking. Uh, we have lots of things to learn about the Porsche. I'm definitely not the best tour guide. I see washer fluid and brake fluid can be checked from up here. But anyway, I guess that's uh, pretty much a good first tour to check out the Porsche. Gosh, there's another bad scratch. I hadn't even, no, no. Once again, it wipes off. <laughs> okay. Uh, anyway, I think that's a good first tour to just check out the Porsche and see what I'm working with here. And we'll get this video produced and get it out there and hopefully get to work and start doing some stuff to this thing. Uh, really excited to see what I can do with it. Uh, I feel like I can make this thing into a super, super cool car. So the decision will be, does it end up a hoopty in the hills flip or does it end up something I drive for a little while? Anyway, stay tuned. I think we're gonna have some pretty cool content from this thing. I'm looking really forward to playing with it. I'm uh, feeling like I have an exotic car. I know exotic car guys don't consider a Porsche Boxster an exotic car, but in Clarksburg, West Virginia, a Porsche Boxster is absolutely an exotic car. Uh, not a lot of Porsches running around here. <laughs> I, I know of maybe, I don't know, three. Uh, one of my real estate friends has a super nice Boxster, a newer one. Uh, there's a green 911 GTR that I see all the time around Bridgeport, but uh, as far as normally seeing them run around, not something you see. So uh, maybe it's not an exotic to the YouTube world, but to Clarksburg, West Virginia, this is very, very exotic. Anyway, thank you for checking out my video and please like and subscribe. And hopefully I can come up with some really cool content for you guys. We have some projects that we started out with that went really slower than I expected them to that are getting ready to be finished, especially the Danger Ranger is almost ready to rock and roll. We're just doing a little bit of touch up on it and we should have the Ranger posted and listed for sale. And hopefully I can show you all how smart I am and how much money I made. No, <laughs> we did bad on that. Uh, too much money spent problems I didn't expect and a lot of time that I would have liked to save. But anyway, we are going to sell it and we are going to hopefully at least get our money back. It's not going to be a cash cow profit. So we got to, we got to practice this car business stuff. <laughs> anyway, thank you. Y'all have a very nice day. Peace out. Maybe we'll uh, go to a nice rural road here real quick and at least give it one nice pull. I have, you know, just from watching other people's reviews and other people playing with these cars on YouTube, uh, you know, my favorite videos and probably my biggest inspiration is Hoovy, Tyler Hoover's channel. And he did a video with one of these. It was a pretty old video. I'd say it was a couple years ago and he almost burned up the clutch trying to do a burnout uh, because this car, you know, American cars are built to do burnouts. This car is not, it's almost impossible to get it to do a burnout. It's so well balanced. Uh, it's just not what it's made for. Unfortunately, I don't know how well you can tell in the video, but one of the bad things about driving a car like this in West Virginia is this is absolutely the very first nice day coming out of winter. We actually just had a March snowstorm and the roads are just in terrible condition. If you pay attention as we're driving along here, you can probably see some snow still stacked up along the road in some places. It literally just snowed two days ago and it's in the 60s today, so I'm taking advantage. Right here actually is a pile of snow. 
still not completely burned up. So to make a proper video about a new car, I think you gotta get out and test drive it. So here we go. Let's get this Porsche on the road, see what it can do. I'm having a hard time containing my excitement. Uh, the kid in me that always wanted a Porsche. I mean, I won't say it's my absolute top dream car, I'd rather have a 911, obviously, or a roof. But this Boxster, whoo! I mean, for the reputation that these things have of not being fast, I don't know. Maybe it's not fast compared to a 911 or compared to other German cars, exotic cars, things like that. But compared to things that I've driven in my life and things that I've owned, it's pretty damn impressive. <coughs> really, from never driving a Porsche before, I'd say the thing that you notice first is the way this engine feels and how high it revs just how absolutely smooth it is. Like you hear, as a guy who's used to driving Corvettes and Mustangs and Trans Ams and Camaros, you know, you hear the exotic car people talk about how smooth the car runs. And you know, muscle cars aren't meant to be smooth. So it's not a fair comparison for the muscle car crowd, but when you get in this thing and feel uh, how it accelerates and how the shifter feels and how the brakes feel and how the suspension is, uh, there's really nothing like this car that I've ever been in at least. Uh, and the handling, this honestly makes me want a new Corvette even more because my first time ever driving a mid-engine car, I am just blown away at how this thing sticks to the road. I mean, the handling is really, it's not comparable to anything I've ever driven before. I mean, and I've even driven some all-wheel drive roadsters, uh, like an Audi TT. I've actually driven the, you know, the, the fast, the Audi TT that's 225, 225 purse purse, uh, the V6, and it doesn't handle anything like this thing. I mean, the all-wheel drive is nice, but the way this thing throws itself into a corner and sticks to the road, it's absolutely incredible. Uh, not even talking about the speed, like, it would be hard for anybody in a rear wheel drive car to keep up with this thing. Uh, it's not a surprise to me that people track these things stock without doing anything to them. Uh, I'm very tempted to start looking for somewhere to track this thing. I know there's a couple places up in Pennsylvania you can do like Auto X, I think it's called. Uh, that may be in my future. Because, you know, this one is not so nice that I would worry every time I put it on the track about damaging it. Uh, I'd be willing to go pretty much balls to the wall on this thing. <laughs> just see what it can do. So we're going to get out on the interstate here just for a second. We're only going up one exit. There's so much traffic I can't really open it up. Oh, but listen to that motor.
rid of a, a 2001 Corvette, and it doesn't feel as fast as that. I guess that would have been more of a class of a 911. Um, but really, the smoothness and the handling, like, I, I can't see how this car could be any more enjoyable to drive. Uh, and, you know, that was a completely... Without even a second thought and without feeling like I'm dangerous, I mean, that was 125 easy. In a stretch of like, I don't know, a mile, maybe less. I mean, you can just feel the build quality of this car. I am, I gotta say, if we're doing like a review, which is kind of what I usually do on these, even for a 99, I am kind of disappointed in the quality of the interior, just the materials. But if I was comparing it to like a Corvette, I would have had expected it to be better. And it's not better. It's the same or worse. You know, it's just the low quality interior. And I really wanted to kind of open this thing up, but as you guys can see, nothing but traffic today, so we're going to play nice and not do anything crazy. We want to have fun, but we don't want to be reckless. stops either <laughs> so we're gonna behave as much as we can even though we just went 125 other than that we're gonna behave all right so we came out here to a little bit of a hidden area one of my favorite little roads around town lots of big turns it's actually where there's a bunch of factories so there's not much activity down here no police hopefully this is actually a road that I have come to a lot to do things like burnouts. <laughs> I also taught two of my former girlfriends to drive on this road. Well, maybe I was the only ones to teach them, but when I had a really cool Trans Am, everybody wanted to drive. I bought a couple people here. Love you, Stephanie and Tina. <laughs> but anyway not too many people around here so we can play around a little bit let's just see if it'll be a burnout just out of curiosity let's see i don't see a traction control button maybe it doesn't have traction control hopefully the porch people aren't laughing at me i do not see a traction control button though i don't know let's just bust ass and see what it does not at all RPM so this is a lot of turns on this road so we're not gonna get crazy fast but Woo! okay 75 is probably fast enough on this road <laughs> Obviously, I 
wish it had more power, but it is exactly what it's supposed to be. This is the car that saved Porsche, and they built this car to be an affordable, balanced, great driving, you know, Euro style, not meant to be a race car. It's a roadster, and it's exactly, exactly what it was meant to be. All right, well, I got some other work to do. I really gotta get back to the real world and stop goofing off. We'll do one more little pull here. Got a little bit of wheel spin there. <laughs> Just barely though. And I, there was actually a lot of uh, crap on the road there. Probably, like I said, it snowed a couple days ago. Maybe a little salt sitting there. Plus we were turning. But, you know, the way this thing sounds, I hope it comes across, I hope this camera actually picks up what this exhaust sounds like. Gosh, man, I don't, as far as I know from what it looks like and what the people I bought it from told me, I believe it is stock exhaust, but man, it just sounds really good. Now, obviously I've seen some of the ones on YouTube with like the Borla exhaust doesn't sound that good uh, exhaust will definitely be one of the things I consider going to this car but it's it's for stock I mean it's it's definitely got that German sound like it sounds you know more like a Formula One car or a Indy car that it does the American style that I'm used to you know the goal for the American style cars to sound like a NASCAR and the goal for a European style car is to sound like a Formula One car. Uh, it definitely has that high-end rev uh, and just absolute, absolute purr. That, you know, it's it's intoxicating when you get on it. I mean, you really, it, it's hard to shift or let off of it. I mean, you really love to hear that high-end, high-end. This, this car right now is making me hate the traffic.
You can't stop me now 